So I would like to introduce myself. I'm Yannis Yogas. I'm an artist and also I'm one of the co-organizers and members of the scientific committee. Uh, what we will, uh, uh, the way we will work to, to, to this uh, in this uh, session is that we will present uh, Efi Yamapulu, who is here with us. Uh, correct my the way I spell your name, Yi Yun. Correct. Jian. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Marian and uh, Simon, uh, uh, who are from the hub in Switzerland. Christopher Kaks, Ma uh, Marian Lergen and uh, Simon Elder, who are from the hub in Switzerland. Christopher Kaksmarek, who is from the United States. And uh, Deitre, uh, Deitre uh, MacLeod, who is from uh, the United Kingdom. What we will do is that uh, each one of, uh, of you will present for three minutes their, their ideas. And then I will moderate the discussion, first of all, between us, but also uh, between the, us in the panel, I mean, and also between the, those who are present in that conference. The concept of uh, uh, being here is a concept of creating a community. Uh, you know, sometimes this concept of community has been addressed many times in a theoretical discourse, which is fine, but community means uh, presence, means being there, so to say. So by itself, what we do here is a little bit of a contradiction. On the other hand, we are, uh, we are here, and that's what it is, because it is on the one hand a, an impresent uh, situation. On the other hand, even the remote, because all these ideas that have connected us, the fact that with Marianne and Christopher we were together uh, last time in Prespa, but also during uh, many venues that uh, these uh, have been worked with, may make us uh, believe that we are in that community. So, Effie? If you want to introduce your, yourself and just uh, your, for three or four minutes, tell us uh, your idea about your paper. Uh, also, we, we chose this idea of a panel because we thought that in that way we can really read the, the papers now or, or afterwards. But what is more important is to make a discourse, to discuss ideas and all what is related to, the, to them. Welcome, Effie. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very happy to be here. I think I'm just going to take about four minutes, so not quite three minutes. And I should stay for, say from the start that I'm not an artist, but I'm a literature reader, right? And my job is to read literature and to teach uh, English and Anglophone literature uh, at the School of English here at Aristotle University of Thessaloniki in Greece. Now, I have had an interest in questions of mobility for a very long long time, mostly in relation to uh, migration, but also other forms of mobility and movement and travel. And uh, in, in, in my presentation, I've chosen to read closely two walking scenes uh, that can be found uh, uh, in uh, the Balkan trilogy, which is uh, uh, three novels, uh, a trilogy written by the British novelist Olivia Manning uh, back in the 1960s, that's when it came out. And the Balkan trilogy is uh, a story uh, about the war, the Second World War, an account of that, a fictional account. But it is also a story about the state of the nation, about England, and mind you, England uh, 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 on a world stage. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the novels uh, follow the lives uh, uh, of the English uh, community, the English expatriate community in wartime Bucharest, uh, as they travel gradually towards the south of Europe to reach Athens and then to move to the Middle East, uh, as the Nazi forces advance, right? So uh, it, is, uh, it is a novel which is literally organized uh, around uh, uh, the notion of enforced uh, movement and dislocation. It's full of refugees, full of hunted down uh, Eastern European uh, Jews, relocated soldiers. So this is very, very central in this novel. 
Now, uh, when I read it, I thought this novel also asked another question, which is uh, uh, when white English subjects uh, walk as refugees, uh, what are the implications for the idea of white Englishness, of Englishness and whiteness? In other words, uh, uh, what are the connections between walking and cultural and collective identities? Now, to make sense of the, the walking scenes that I focused on, right, of these literary representations of walking, uh, uh, I explored how they speak to the cultural narratives uh, 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 about the nation that are dominant at that particular moment in history. And these are narratives and stories uh, that center on the war, on the Second World War in Britain, okay? Uh, and they are stories that have fueled the myth of the Second World War in, in Britain, in post-war Britain, uh, up to the present. They kind of take uh, the British back to that moment of glory and resilience uh, and, you know, how, of great greatness, uh, uh, if you like. Uh, and what uh, I argue is that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, notion of England, the idea of England that's implicit in those popular stories about the war uh, is uh, a, a highly racialized one. It's white England, it's white Britain, okay, that's very much there. So at the heart of these popular narratives, uh, what we find is the uh, the white English subject, an all-seeing, an all-knowing subject, an ethically and civilizationally uh, um, uh, superior subject, indivisible, autonomous, untouched by the world and its surroundings, uh, uh, invisible, the white body being unmarked, uh, and so and very much moving in straight lines. So in that sense, uh, uh, England as a cultural and, and national space uh, almost in inverted commas, uh, uh, um, uh, rightfully, uh, uh, is orientated around power and privilege. Now, my argument is that the main English character in the, the scenes that I, I focus on, Prince Yakimov, right, the way his, his, his walking is represented unsettles all these assumptions that are built into the idea of Englishness, uh, you know, that's in, uh, to be found in these popular war stories. And uh, it's the very way that his walking escapades are represented that does that. Uh, what this uh, literary representation of walking does is, first of all, it brings uh, 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 to our attention, uh, uh, Prince Yakimov, this male character's physical and ontological disorientation. He is shown to be a man out of place, not at home with the world, not in line. And the other thing that walking does, or the representation of walking does, is to emphasize uh, his enfleshed materiality, his embodiedness. He is a man who is constantly uh, neurotically hungry. He's always he always tries to eat as much as he can. He's never full. And eating here works as a process uh, uh, of bringing him into contact with the world. He's being touched by others. It's a way, a, a, you know, a way of uh, establishing connection with others. So to come to an end, uh, you know, basically what I've argued is that. Uh, 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 if we want to think about the cultural politics of this text, uh, uh, we can say that it suggests that spaces are racialized by the way they are orientated, uh, by the way they invite us to move through them. But it also suggests that acts of walking, that is, ways of crossing spaces, have the potential of unsettling these orientations. And as a final point, I should say that this doesn't mean that I subscribe to the idea that walking is, in a way, essentially uh, transgressive in itself. Uh, uh, you know, its politics and impact obviously have to be decided in context and in relation to the stories that surround the act of walking. Thank you. Thank you, Effie, for putting that uh, in that context. It's a very interesting point of view that we have not yet elaborated in this uh, uh, that conference, and so it's very important for us to have this point of view as well. Uh, I will uh, ask uh, together. Gian, welcome to our conference.
Yes, thank you. Um, I'm so pleased to be here, here in Chicago with all of you and all the places that you are. Um, uh, my name is Jian Li, and I live in Chicago uh, in the U.S. And uh, I, uh, my work is about place, so everything that we're talking about here is all very pertinent. Um, in North America, uh, there has been become more and more of a tradition of starting talks and conversations with something called the land acknowledgement, uh, where we acknowledge the indigenous peoples um, whose lands we are on here in North America. And uh, so here, uh, what's now called Chicago uh, is called Jekagoynak in Potawatomi. And those are the peoples um, whose lands these are, as well as other indigenous nations uh, the Ojibwe, Odawa, Menominee, Ho-Chunk, uh, Meskwaki. Um, uh, Chicago is located on Lake Michigan, uh, which is one of the Great Lakes, uh, and it's at the crossroads of the Great Lakes waterway system, um, where it can reach uh, the Mississippi River, River, which flows down to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so this site here has been settled uh, by Europeans, <laughs> and before that, um, uh, was a meeting place uh, for uh, Native people um, precisely because of the waterway transportation systems that met up here. Um, lately, when I've been doing talks uh, online, I've also been wanting to talk about uh, the land that the technology is based in and comes from. Uh, I think, um, you know, we as people who are concerned with walking are very aware and conscious of um, our bodies uh, in relation to movement and place. Um, and so uh, I was looking up um, uh, this technology, Blue Jeans, uh, seems to be provided by Verizon. Verizon's headquarters is in New York City. Uh, New York City, uh, the indigenous uh, peoples whose territory uh, the current New York City is in is the Lenape Hoking, uh, the Lenape people. Um, and then um, thinking about like the computers and the smartphones and the technology itself, um, you know, all of the different minimal minerals and substances, um, as well as all of the labor, you know, that um, involves lots and lots of different places. So I'm trying to learn more about what all of the elements are, um, uh, as well as the labor um, uh, chain and the production chain. Um, of all of that, and and it's it's a lot. Um, so I use walking. Um, so I'm an artist. Um, I am Korean, and my early life involved a lot of migration. Um, my father was in the diplomatic service for South Korea, and I was actually born in Japan. And we lived in several different countries um, before we came to the U.S. Um, so my early life was defined by lots of movement across. Uh, different continents and countries and languages. Um, and uh, and now as an artist, um, that's the focus of, of what I do. And um, I feel uh, very fortunate that uh, walking is something that other people are interested in as a medium um, because I'm interested in it. Um, and I, um, I use it primarily both for myself and um, in projects for other people as a way to witness the history um, and the current structures of uh, racism and genocide and colonization um, here in the US primarily. Um, uh, I'm more used to urban places. Um, so uh, when, I, when I do my walks um, or when I create walking projects for others, um, there's an entire set of uh, buildings and roads and other, other elements of the built environment uh, that really show, uh, you know, that different demographics by income, by race, by education. Um, and uh, it's uh, when I go and do the research, it confirms what I see. It's both visible um, in what you see, um, as well as in what, um, you know, archives and historical materials tell us. Um, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what we'll discuss uh, when we are in the group discussion portion, but as an artist and a maker, I'm very interested in how other people think about um, 
uh, if you're using research um, as an element of your practice, uh, how does that arise in the work that you're making? Um, how, uh, because that's, that's something I'm interested in thinking through, like how to take uh, information and feelings and interviews and all of the things that's coming in to, into my mind, how to make that either visible or felt uh, in a way that's, you know, not completely didactic, or maybe it is didactic, but still, you know, engaging in some way. Um, so that's definitely something that I'm interested, I would be interested in talking more about. Thank you. Thank you very much, Diane. Thank you. Thank you. It, is, it seems that this concept of transition, in your case, I mean, you refer to all these big uh, American cities and their hidden story with all of those names. You must have said more than 50 names of uh, the Indian uh, tribes and territories that existed before that. And in a way, it connects that to what Effie has said, this concept of transitional paths that go from Bucharest to Athens, but people are living it in an oppressive and dangerous, of course, for their lives regime during the Nazi occupation. So there, there is this connection of transition, I think. Chris Kaczmarek. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Chris Kaczmarek. Uh, I'm based in the United States, as was mentioned. And, and I'm also representing for Deirdre McLeod. She unfortunately wasn't able to join us today. Uh, she's based in Scotland, and we've been uh, collaborating on several projects over the past year, year and a half or so. And uh, our most recent work is, is Telegraph Prespa, which is a, a participatory artistic uh, research project that was executed over the course of the, the Walking with a Question conference here. And what we're kind of examining through this work is uh, using walking as a structure to explore the, the specifics of place, you know, literally walking with a question and creating stories through, through points of connection, through exchange. And we actually, Marianne and Faye both uh, participated in this during the course of the conference. So thank you to, to both of you. Uh, and so you already know the structure, but for those that don't know the structure, uh, we've created the structure where we, we ask individuals to go for a walk and at the furthest point to capture a gesture that they observe in their local area, which could be human, non-human, animate, non-animate. And then we ask them to translate that observed or visual gesture into a brief written or, or verbal text. Uh, and then we have this structure where we exchange those texts with the other participants. So there's a receiving and an interpreting of the text, the other, and then the individuals are asked to reproduce the gesture in their space. So there's an observed remote gesture that is exchanged between the participants. And then the participants are asked to recreate or, or uh, perform those remote gestures in their local spaces and the, and the collection of these interactions are all then tied together in a, a singular video that creates uh, local intimacies and remote corrections uh, through that juxtaposition. So for this specific iteration, uh, Telegraph Prespa, there, there's the, the nodes of exchange. Each one had at least one individual in Prespa, and this was very important to us. Uh, and that, that becomes a, a, a connective tissue specific to this iteration. And to kind of give a, a, I have a short clip <laughs> that I'm going to play as, as a premiere, just finished editing it this morning. Uh, and it will be published on the Walk, Listen, Create site in the very near future as part of the, the conference collection. But I'm going to share screen right here real quickly. Let's share video clip, quick time player. And is everyone able to see that? Can I get a thumbs up? Yeah. Yeah. All right, super. So I'm going to mute me and go ahead and play this if I can.
I'll go ahead and stop it right there. Uh, the full thing, as I said, will be available very soon on the Walk, Listen, Create website. And uh, this is this is just a little little snippet showing some of those really interesting connections that start to happen as you see these observations being translated and then brought into uh, remote spaces. And especially like go with the flow, the first sort of prompt that was created by Herman there in Prespa. Uh, it, it, people created something each everyone used water in their go with the flow so you start to find these languages and these commonalities even though there's people all over the world that are doing doing this exchange and this interaction so uh, it's it's really quite a, a, an exciting output uh, and I, hopefully you all will have the opportunity to see the full video uh, soon and with that thank you <laughs> thank you chris and uh that's interesting to see how uh, an initial uh, stimulus is being translated into different people all over the world, and how they are uh, some uh, they are interpreting uh, the same uh, what you call gesture that has also a very strong uh, tradition in uh, painting and in the visual arts, so to say, in a way that is totally renewed and in being becoming contemporary in that way. And uh, we move on to Simon and uh, Marianne. Welcome uh, to our conference. Of course, with Marianne, we worked uh, uh, in the last uh, encounters in two ways. The one was the artistic way and the other was she was the coordinator in the conference, and <laughs> this is why the conference went so well last time. <laughs> Thank you very much once more, uh, Marianne. So can you say a few things about your... Uh, yes. The hub? Uh, we have to say again that there was this concept of creating hubs and not having just individual, only individual projects in an idea to enforce this concept of community. And in the beginning it was... Uh, so there was an open uh, uh, call for hubs, and there were nine actually that were finally realized. We thought that it would be no more than two or three, but finally there were nine, and all of them had uh, something significant to contribute to our effort. And now we see the one from Switzerland. Marianne and Simon, the floor is yours, let's say. <laughs> Simon, should I start? Yes, you can start. <laughs> Okay, so hi, I'm a walking artist from Switzerland, and um, I'm in my practice. I'm doing a lot of mostly group walks, so I invite people to come along, and um, it's it's not about the perception of a place or to to walk out something uh, a characteristic or a quality of a place or also a topic of a place. The last time when I was in in Zarades, we I focused on on uh, all these ruins there because I, I read a lot about the place and it was in, in, in any text it was written that this uh, village doesn't exist anymore, there are just ruins or other parts of the villages that still exist are in ruins. So I made a walk where we thought, where we observed ruins and thought of which thoughts can we have about these ruins or this situation. And th this time um, for why I, we couldn't travel, and I, th I also liked this proposition of having hubs, so to ha to have a group of people in another place, as we have in Zurich, and to collaborate or, or to uh, participate uh, remotely in all the activities. So I asked Simone, who is uh, an artist, she can present herself, and she has a, a artistic space an art space in Zurich, and perhaps Simon, you can introduce you and your space. That so, this was also the space where we, the hub was based. Um, it, it's it's not so interesting, but um, yes, I'm I'm a, a artist. I don't like the word in English, visual artist, because it's so visual. So, but I study art since uh, yeah, about 20 years before, but since 10 years, um, yeah, I work under the pseudonym or maybe let's say the label 
ähm, Künstlerinnen-Kollektiv Marcy. So repeat everybody, Künstler. No, just joking. joking. So it's it's um, in, in translated, it's something like a human artist collective Marcy. And um, for us, or, or maybe for me in my uh, artistic practice, um, it's I'm always a plural, so I'm not singular. So I am always um, more as myself, me. And um, this is the reason I'm doing a lot of uh, creating platforms, open spaces, um, creating possibilities, giving power when, when I win um, some money or, or uh, let's say, uh, artist in residency to, 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 to share it or sometimes to um, give it away, make a game on it, or uh, sharing material and knowledge. And be not too sad when the most of the material is no longer working or is broken. So, um, long story, uh, short ending with this space we have now here. Um, this is a space we are calling it as a, a space for collective art praxis. And uh, it's in Zurich, and Zurich is a crazy city. I'm new here, but um, yeah, it's interesting. And we have we have space, we have room, we have possibilities. So of course I say yes when Marian asked me to make a hoop, and I have a good uh, memory of of Gert and um, walking in in La Romie, and so I'm totally in. <laughs> So the, 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 the idea of the hub was to have this small space where Simone is, and it's on the ground floor, so it was a former store. So when you look out of the window there, you have always people uh, walking through, and, and you have also tramways passing at the night. You have, you, it's really, you have a different, uh, it's really interesting place, because also people who just pass, they come and ask, what are you doing here, what is this? And uh, so it was really a, an active hub too because we streamed your things, we, we, we projected, and we also made uh, the discourse of other projects accessible in this space. And then we started, uh, because it was, it's really a place where the inside and the outside, the public and the, the let's say the private or the, the inner private is uh, just, uh, you have this door in this space. And so this is why I proposed for the start of our up and also for the conference, this walk, uh, walking in outdoors. So really, this focus of what is a door, what, where is the transition, where, 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 uh, if you go, if you try to enter doors, where is the moment where you feel you're intruding, or where is the moment where you feel in the public space? And so I made this walk with a score, and we had people on site who are doing it, and also people online who did it remotely. And this was a nice moment where the exchange of the people who did it remotely was um, brought to the people who did it on site too. So we had really this moment of international, um, uh, yeah, where you see when you do the same score, what happens if you do it in different places, and what 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 was the experience with these tours in in, in Bath? Faye was uh, also participating, or in Utrecht, or wherever. And we did also a project with, uh, yeah, as, we, as I knew the last time when we was in, in Saradas in Prespa, there, there's a huge amount of things you, and activities. So we said we won't propose a lot. We just propose this one walk and we will collaborate and we will do all kinds of scores and invite people on site to do scores. So we had a huge, uh, we could, we had a lot of experiences uh, in all these remote projects and, it, and we will have to digest it for the next weeks. And um, it was really great. And I want just to name one project we collaborated with. Hillary is also here, I see. Um, she proposed Walk Around the Block. Uh, was a, was a score to walk every day the same route for half an hour or an hour, the five days of the conference. And we had six people who did it in Zurich. And, and Hillary at the end couldn't make it, but she was the, still the person who, who introduced the idea, and it was a nice exchange also after these five days of, uh, of walking. 
Yeah, so we have other, we had other nice collaboration and also the Telegraph project who was really inspiring. And I don't know, Simon, do you want to to um, add something? Uh, maybe I just want to say thank you uh, because I know it's a big, big, huge program and there are so many people involved. In it. And I just want to say to Janik and Gerd, uh, thank you for doing this because it needs always people doing something that people can connect it. So just say um, thank you for your work and for everybody. Uh, I think that's, that's uh, the, yeah, just say thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I, want to, I want to say, say one thing. We will, in the same space, we will start uh, like an a, a exhibition, a exhibition platform or something at the 12th of August, where we will invite people from Zurich who have walking practice, but also uh, this material from the hub and on this all, uh, we want to transform it in a way that we can also uh, in, expose it in this, like digesting and then exposing in the, in the exhibition we will do uh, in, in August. So this is the, like a second step of, of of all this outcome from this hub. Really, thank you also for the idea of of having hubs. It was it, I, I was really a great uh, a thing of of new like uh, starting new um, cells of this community who can grow then to the bigger thing. Thank you. Well, I, I would like to start from uh, Marianne, who is uh, at the Simon. Uh, you were saying that you were in a re related also to your project in Prespa, the, the previous one that you did uh, with, the, with the ruins. Uh, in the ruins, it seemed that you went from inside, from outside to the inside. You were observing in the street. In this one, it seems to me, from what I can understand, that you were going from the inside to the outside for something like a vice versa process is this can this be called a little bit accurate because uh, just uh, a question and uh, i will yeah it's 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 similar in the way that it starts from a phenomenon that's on site so so or or here was really the because we're also interested in this public private pub, what is public space what is walking in public space and where is this border? And normally, it's 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 a door, or it's it's materialized as a door. But it's also rules and things. And uh, in this, perhaps, the ruins, it was also like a phenomenon on the place. What happens there? What? what why is, are all these um, uh, houses not used anymore? And how are there? Uh, the, the, yeah, it was. Yeah, something special and for me on this place. And how can we start to think about it by uh, first of it observing the physical aspect of it. So also with the doors, if you if you approach it from the physical side, the one person who was also doing it afterwards said, "This moment when where you go, uh, pro, uh, put your hand on the handle, and the moment where you know." Is it, will it open or not? So could be, it's quite a physical moment, but at the same time, you can start to, to think about what is this moment when you enter things or, or go out of things or come to another, uh, yeah. But where is this key moment where transition happens and what happens in this special moment? Okay. Yes, I'm trying to make a bridge uh, between uh, the project of 2019 for those who have been there, and I will continue with Chris, to make this bridge because, you know, as artists and as people who contemplate, the ideas flow and change. So for you, Chris, this idea of uh, working between the first uh, project that you, in the 2019 and 2021, do you see any similarities, the differences, affinities or not? Um, yeah, it's interesting you, you bring up that question. I hadn't thought of it, and it's, it feels like a very good question <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Because the, the initial sort of artistic project I did in 2019 was, again, a, a space where I, as an artist, wasn't creating content. You know, I was trying to create a context where 
uh, others would 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 fill it, right? Uh, and and in this this current project, it, it's very similar. Deirdre and myself, we're creating a, a structure where the content is created by others' particip participation in it. Uh, and so there's a real direct parallel, even though the, the, the visual outcomes are very, very different. The, the one that I did in 2019 uh, was, a, was a very sort of frenetic, kinetic, digital uh, blending thing that was done by a, a computer program that I wrote. And this is, is much calmer, which is kind of nice <laughs> on some levels. But yeah, there's, there's certainly this idea of the collaborative, of the community, and creating a space uh, very much like you know, the conference <laughs> where we are coming together uh, as a group with, with common values, uh, common interests and, and sharing in order to create some really amazing things uh, and, and new knowledge through that collection, that juxtaposition of the elements that we bring uh, from remote areas to, to, to local spaces. Yeah, that's, that's a, a great connection. Thank you for that question. <laughs> yeah. No, for me, being also the editor of this volume that we did and all that effort, it's interesting to keep the, the thread between the different aspects of each one of you individually. And uh, we have to say that uh, this, uh, the way we organize this venue is that there is, uh, of course, the, the preparation for one year, not only administratively, but also conceptually and intellectually of how this is going to be done. And then the, the the year after, meaning, let's say, from now, the 2021-2022, we will put together all this material. We thank someone like Chris who said all these, uh, how many, 500 photos <laughs> that were so interesting in many ways, and uh, they gave a perspective. And what, what is interesting for me, at least, is to see how people are interpreting the, the same uh, small spots or the same stories or the same walkthroughs in a different way, visually, and also from what they write. So, also, so it's not about uh, a place, so to say, but it is a about the topos of ideas that come and they work together and all that. So, for me, this I will bring that question to most of those who have to those who have participated twice to see how they feel it during this process and during those years. Uh, so I will, I, if someone wants to ask something, questions, and uh, I will be glad to, I, well, let me see the chat, what has come up, and uh, we can start. Uh, okay, if you can address a question before. Uh, I have to say that also for Gian, this story of uh, the hidden presence of those who were there, so to say, after before us, is mm -hmm. present to every local, uh, almost all over the world, so to say, and how to to reflect on that, but also in Prespa, probably, but that could be also this kind of an invisibility, so to say, the, the visibility of the invisible, so to say, what is is there. And it's not only a matter of uh, which is on the one level uh, allowing memory to exist and giving, let's say, a second thought for what has existed, but also to realize be because all these memories create a reality. It's not only about nostalgia; it is a reality. Yes, Effie. Yeah, yeah. I think also the um, you know the practice of um, in in the walking projects that I do. It is a lot about uh, looking at history and looking at the past, um, but uh, but the essence of it is seeing how it all lives in the present, um, and that's sort of the intent of uh, when people are doing land acknowledgments. Um, one of the ways that um, uh, indigenous people get erased uh, in North America is this idea that they all exist in the past, and no, no one actually there that there are no native people in the present. Um, which is uh, which is a big part of the um, the story of, of North America is is this idea of conquest um, and and modernity um, and so 
uh, I think it's been really interesting um, with the use of land acknowledgements, people are looking into the history of each place in terms of whose ancestral homelands um, people are on, um, but also having to um, just even speaking the names and having to do that kind of research um, brings you face to face with Native people in the present. Um, and uh, it's a big, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big deal um, here in North America that um, uh, that the U.S. and Canada have uh, have taken up all of the land and all of the space um, with this idea of that particular nation state. Um, but indigenous peoples not only still exist, but that they have sovereignty um, is uh, is something that you know obviously they've been fighting for for a long time. Um, so yeah, so uh, in, in terms of how I think about it in my work, whenever whenever I talk about uh, Native people in the past, I try to bring something about Native people in the present as well. Like what is the local, you know, American Indian Center? Who are the activist groups that are working on Native sovereignty? Um, and, and try to make sure that people understand like we're not just talking about people in the past. Do watching, how has that helped you? Watching practices, this is something. Can you be a little bit more specific about that? Oh, um, yeah. Uh, let's see. So, uh, in a lot of uh, uh, in a lot of places in the U.S., um, uh, major roads are built on uh, roads that were created and used by Native people. Um, for hundreds or even thousands of years. Um, and so when settlers came, whether they were British or French or Spanish, um, uh, they just used the roads that Native people had already created. And so some of those are now like the major roads in my, in my city in Chicago or major highways all across the U.S. Um, and uh, that's, um, if you're asking about like uh, how how do we see that trace? Um, I think that's that's one of the most obvious uh, ways that I think uh, uh, our presence on native land, it, it, you know, can be witnessed by walking in the present. Um, and and that's sort of what I was asking about is you wouldn't know that unless someone told you, right? So um, when I do my projects, what is the vehicle by which someone understands that? Um, is it just the, the text that comes on the website with the walk, or is it written, or is it a video, or is it a sound piece, you know, like that. So I, I've done all of those different things um, uh, it, with different projects, and I've, I'm just curious about how other people resolve that, you know, the idea of trying to act, convey actual information along with the walking itself. Thank you, Jen. Effie, we interrupted you, I think, a little bit before. No, I'm, I'm, I was actually going to say something else about uh, 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 the idea of community. Uh, but uh, now that uh, 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 I've heard Gian speak. Uh, uh, it kind of uh, sort of, uh, you know, she, you know, what she said is very close to my heart. Uh, uh, what she says about history, about the past, uh, living on in the present, uh, and I think what you're describing, if I understand you, uh, 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 Gian, is that uh, it's 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 history as a site uh, of constant struggle and uh, you know and, and negotiation. That is, there is a, 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 a kind of uh, uh, set idea of the past, uh, native peoples are out of it, uh, and then you have to kind of excavate their stories through walking somehow, if I understand correctly what, what, what it is that you're doing through your uh, project. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, in what I said, uh, uh, the, the, the whole idea of history in the past is also uh, very important. The history of the war, for example, uh, the way it lives on, it's very much a, a kind of uh, uh, imaginary, it's, it's a kind of fantasy uh, uh, of uh, how the nation imagines itself, itself how the English nation 
imagines itself. And, and then walking becomes a medium through which you can bring different stories into this big narrative, this dominant, uh, powerful narrative. Uh, and I, I quite liked, uh, Jan, what you said in um, uh, in an, uh, uh, the work that you uploaded on the side when you said that the creation of home or the homeland involves the adaptation of stories, right, of histories. So it's this idea of adapting, of having to adapt, having to negotiate, uh, right, uh, that makes uh, uh, history itself uh, into a mobile kind of site, right, uh, nothing um, uh, very, very settled. Uh, uh, and, um, well, the other thing that uh, I just had in mind while you were talking is this idea of the community that you, you kind of refer to this more than once, uh, Jan, that uh, this idea of the hub, uh, it, it was all about creating a community, but it's a very interesting kind of community that you created or you, you, you are in the process of creating because it's a community which is not based on, on sameness, but it's based on, on difference. It's a kind of community that's trying to uh, it's not just about proximities, uh, but it's also about differences. It's trying to accommodate all these different ways of, for example, interpreting a, a prompt, right? Uh, and I thought that was uh, that was a, a very interesting. Uh, um, uh, it's, it's a very very interesting concept. Uh, um, I've got more to say, but I'll stop. Uh, since we want you to say a few more things, <laughs> one question. Uh, we know that uh, even from the recent watching arts paradigms with Richard Long, Fulton and the other uh, artists, uh, uh, why has uh, watching been so important in uh, uh, British uh, culture the last uh, 200 years? It seems that uh, it is one of the geographic areas where uh, when watching, and maybe Faye Stevens can say a few things about that, watching is still, uh, I won't say one of the most yeah. The music one, but it is very important. We speak about yeah. literature, we speak about the arts, we speak about, you know, what we call, uh, referring to the now historic example, we are still alive, Long and uh, Fulton. From your knowledge of English culture and the literature and art, what do you think this has made it so important related to what uh, this is? I mean, Goodness me, I, I have no idea. I, it's probably my next research project. <laughs> but, but you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, you, when you go back, you go back to the Romantics, for example. Uh, last year, I tried to, uh, well, I tried. I read most of uh, Dorothy Wordsworth's uh, 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 Grasmere uh, journal. And uh, it was absolutely amazing and so tiring to read it because they walked absolutely everywhere. It's all about walking and, and walking becomes this, you know, it's not just a physical necessity because they actually had to take things to places and take, you know, carry things from places. It becomes like a source of inspiration, a source of everything, right? But that was something for the romantics, right? Uh, I don't think there is uh, uh, a kind of uh, uh, a single explanation as to why walking is important, it seems to me. Like, uh, uh, as I said before, walking needs to be as uh, you know, to be seen as as a, as, as, a, as a mobile practice, as a cultural practice, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it can it can be understood differently in each context. And I, I really don't have an answer as to why walking is important for uh, British people or is in English literature as a whole. I, I I don't think I could give an answer to that, but. If anyone else has an answer, I'm, I'm happy to. <laughs> we have already a few things. Yeah, that was an open question, you know. That, yeah, you know, uh, right. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. Simone, Simone is uh, writing something previously. When is, where is uh, the transition from history to the present? How do you recognize this with watching? That was uh, Simone's. Then Hillary writes that, uh, hello, Hillary. Hi. <laughs> Hi, hi, Kalimera. Hi, Kalispera. Hi, hi. In the UK, there is the whole notion of being able to walk on public land and have access to land as a walker. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. networks of public footpaths. I spent yeah. uh, the COVID year 
watching many of these in the North Devon area uh, that are only kept open by by watching by watching them. Yeah. Uh, and I add, this is true of all the UK. The wilder the areas, the better. Uh, many of and Hillary adds. Many of these footpaths can disappear in the land if the land is brought is bought by farmers. I have to say that because I, we heard this many times about the paths uh, in the public in the public areas that are. From what I understand, this is something that I did not know. Someone from the UK can correct me. That there are only certain areas when you can actually walk. Is this correct? And uh, that there are paths that are somehow that most of the land is private. This is what it was said, or is this incorrect, Hillary or Faye? There, there is a huge amount of private land. Um, which is not, which is not really so much Greece, so, 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 so that makes it a little bit different. Uh, I, I can comment on that. Uh, yeah, we have something called public access land, and as you may may well know, um, the UK is incredibly well mapped, and uh, these areas of public access land are marked, for instance, throughout the national parks and many other parts of Britain. Uh, and in Scotland, the rules are slightly different. So uh, in Scotland, there's much more access to open land. It is true there is an enormous amount of private land, and this is always marked with signs and uh, fences, um, but plenty of areas where people can walk. And walking is enormously popular, it's true. Yeah. Many, many I, I people think... have... Yeah, sorry, carry on. I was going to say that um, I think one of the um, burning issues, if you like, uh, for many UK walkers is the fact that we should be able to cross land and we should be able to access public uh, still by walking these public footpaths. And they're always in danger of being co-opted by somebody or something but as you say quite quite rightly Anne, there is a lot of parkland there is a lot of moorland that is accessible and common land often this was common land where people would graze their animals and that has still been kept as common land so i think there's an interesting mixture and interesting tensions around the public and the private in terms of walking and in terms of land ownership in the uk Maybe also in order to make a bridge uh, in the book of Federici about the Caliban and the. Uh, he writes about the black pandemia of uh, the 14th century. And she said that one of the consequences was that there were these paths stopped to exist because 70% uh, of the people died. So all this uh, concept of property ceased to have any meaning, so to say. So 200 years later, the Catholic Church especially tried to re-establish these uh, strict uh, rules. Of course, I hope that we don't. Uh, anyway, I don't. <laughs> anyway, uh, it became a social right by on its own because there were there were no people there, so so everything was open. Any more uh, comments? Any more? Uh, um. Hello there. Um, so I'm, can you all hear me okay? Yeah? Yes, okay. Yes, okay. All right, so this is uh, so lovely. Um, uh, this is a fantastic co conversation um, on many levels um, and, and very exciting for me. I found my, uh, my big toes were twitching earlier and that means there's a great conversation having place. I'm an archeologist, so I um, deal constantly with um, I'm a landscape archaeologist, so um, uh, places of ruins, and um, I love ruins and the allure of ruins. Um, how we, and I work in prehistory, so um, uh, specialise in prehistory, but uh, historic landscapes um, also. Um, 
And um, I worked a little bit with Andy Goldsworthy for a project that we did. Um, I was part of a very, very fortunate to be part of a very groundbreaking um, landscape, five-year landscape project in the UK when um, two academics at University College London, where I was based, were experimenting with the philosophy of phenomenology as a way that we can be in landscape and dwell in landscape and walk in landscapes and through our bodies and through our sensory engagement with place, um, somehow the, um, the essence of our experience gives us a potential tangible link to the very notion that place is experience. Um, experiences have different meanings, but um, when you adopt, um, and my work with, with this group were adopting fieldwork methodologies in which you um, in some way can record and document uh, your sensory uh, experience, your, your body, your, your corporeality in space, um, and think about the, uh, the idea of the humanness with that. So to go back to an earlier conversation, um, this site was a, a, a Bronze Age settlement site in the middle of a moor, and you just had these very ephemeral, ruinous structures that were, were circular, and we were excavating many different places, and I was part of both the anthropo anthropology team and the archaeology team. And one of the projects we did in the, in the anthropology team was to document how people walked around the site and whether they responded to the structures in the site or whether they were just moving sort of directly from A to B to get to where they want. And the outcome was, was variable, but it produced some really interesting outcomes. So I, for example, just naturally um, would walk, uh, wouldn't walk across the ruin of a roundhouse. I would walk around the edge of it. Um, whereas other people would just feel fine walking a, a, around it too. So we can start to think about um, ruins and landscape and place and that uh, sense that our senses and our experiences give us, give us an essence, not necessarily of how people felt in that place in the past. We share an experience. Tie that into um, landscapes where you start to find synergies going on where doorways are orientated onto certain features where you see patterns of things taking place and you have this magical experience and I had this very much when I did a lot of work in the west coast of Ireland that you are being choreographed by the ancestors that if you follow the pathways that they are giving you through orientations of particular architectural styles of megalithic tombs you are walking the path of the court tomb builders and you're walking the path of the wedge tomb builders because they're orientating their, 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 their structures in certain ways to create uh, wayfinding as a word. I, I, I can use other words there as well. So I really was really enjoying this uh, conversation around um, ruins and, and landscapes and how we engage with landscapes. And then very quickly, because I don't want to talk too much, but the question about uh, the UK uh, walking <laughs> is, is an entangled um, scenario. Um, so um, a lot of it's got to do with the romantics, as, as was um, mentioned before. I wondered lonely as a cloud is a good starting point there, that our wandering is that of a cloudscape as well as on the land there too. Uh, we also pay a lot of homage to a historian called uh, W.G. Hoskins, who in 1954 wrote a book called The Making of the English Landscape. Um, which was a really seminal piece of, of material at its time. It's not a book about walking, it's a book about landscape, but it is a history of landscape. Um, and it's uh, very much sort of post-war kind of nostalgia for landscape. A lot of the English uh, and British landscapes um, uh, have relics, I'm sure of all of you in the European context, of sort of feudal field systems and pathways and movements there themselves. Um, and as for um, Richard Long um, and Hamish Fulton, they came from a particular school of training. I think that um, they knew each other and that working together, their, their education and how they were educated in their art practice had um, quite a lot to do with that as well. 
So I think there's a many sort of entangled elements as to why there is this walkingness. Of course, the UK is also an, an archipelago, an island archipelago, um, and with lots of Celtic resonances. So that, you know, all you need to do is read a Thomas Hardy novel, and Thomas Hardy novels are full of people walking across landscapes, you know, moving and walking and sleeping in hedges and and, and traipsing through different types of landscapes there as well. So there's a lot of, um, the answer to that question has many layers and many disciplinary layers there as well. Um, I, I okay, it's very, very open and very, very wide. Yeah. I can demonstrate and show you. One image, can you see this image now? To make a connection to Prespa. So this is the photo that I took yesterday. There is this cave. This cave has two entrances, one entrance, one exit. It, it was the only way that you could go to the beach behind. But the, so the water level was here. So as long as the water level was here, this cave was the passage. When the water fell, this path became totally insignificant. No one know. People have even already three years later, almost, I would not say forget, but they see it as an isolated area, while, bef while the passage is from the, uh, from the coastline now, and I speak about Prespa. So I think that this also adds to the, this argument of how the landscape and the way we walk and the way from where we can walk transforms a place from a passage that was before, now it is a cave. Before it was a passage inside the a hill. So the same, um, I will call it even an object, so to say, it's totally transformed from the way we use it. I have a question as the as Simona asked, how can this history brought into the present, but also while walking, how can you bring this? decolonizing also change or, or bring it to another future also? But this was a question to Jan. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, um, well, I think history itself is different from the past. Uh, uh, history are the stories that we tell about the past. Um, so history is always fiction, it's created um, uh, while the past is the past. Um, so uh, yeah, I think um, uh, the, uh, when, I, I think with walking, um, like Effie was saying, uh, a, a everything, everything from the past exists in the present. Um, if you know, to look um, or to feel or to notice. Um, I mean, even just with that photo that you shared just now, um, that shows that that's a picture of the past in the present. Um, and you know, you pointed that out with the with the di with the lines and the arrows there. Um, and uh, I think just so uh, w walking is slow enough to make people have to notice. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why we're also interested in walking as a practice. Um, because uh, uh, if you just uh, keep uh, going at the rate that most of us do most of the time, um, uh, the, I, I think that we feel the past, at least in the US. You know, I, I came to the US when I was nine years old. Um, and this was a horrible place. It felt terrible. It felt like people were mean and um, didn't want us here. And um, it felt like a terrible place. And, and really, it only was through learning about uh, the past in relation to uh, settlers um, and the genocide of Native people, the attempted genocide of Native people, that uh, I realized, oh, that's why this place feels horrible. Um, because all of this stuff happened and nobody has um, done the, you know, at, collectively, there hasn't been the work to look at it, to face it, um, to grieve about it, to reconcile with it, to, to do anything about what's in the past. Um, 
I think, I mean, I think the U.S. in particular is a very specific kind of place in relation to the past because it's full of people who were trying to escape their pasts. Um, uh, so it's particularly reluctant to not look at anything in the past. Um, uh, but I, you know, but you, you, you can't, you know, it's, it's all still there. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's what I appreciate about the walking is that like you, you have to slow down and if you can, if you're open enough, you might be able to see it. Yeah. Thank you, Gian. Uh, walking now towards the conclusion of that uh, very interesting discussion. Uh, about the watching arts, watching stories. I think that uh, the, if we can call it the purpose, but let's say the effort of this uh, the, the discussion was exactly to bring out stories. And we we went to many places. We saw, many, we heard many stories. And uh, I think that this has added to the experience and what uh, this conference uh, is about. I would like uh, to conclude here. Thank you very much for being with us, all of you. Thank you also, Effie, Simone, Marianne, Deidre, who is not here, but we are. Uh, Christopher and Jean. And uh, thank you so much uh, for this uh, discussion. And we look forward for the papers you will receive uh, uh, the directions. Please follow them so that our editor's life is a little bit easier. <laughs> uh, so that then we can have a full uh, aspect, uh, overview of, of what was uh, uh, addressed in this conference, uh, the WAC uh, 2021. Thank you very much.